Hey guys, what's up? So this week I'm going to talk about a different robot. Um, it's the RVR from Sphero. And I've been working with the Misty 2 robot from Misty Robotics. And it's been a great platform. I'm learning a lot. And um, I'm writing code for it in JavaScript. But I thought it'd be worthwhile since you can also code this rover in JavaScript that, um, and it's actually quite a bit cheaper than Misty 2, that it makes sense for me to, to give this a shot and to see what it can do. So that's what I do now, and I kind of go off on a tangent about um, kind of those ultrasonic ping sensors, but um, kind of fits in with the, the project I did with it. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's got motor, good, decent motors, decent tracks that can do some like light outdoor use. It's got some like LED headlights there. Um, it has its own battery which can also power this usb port and then it's got a pretty supposedly awesome color sensor which um, i haven't tested yet but you can have it drive over colors like pieces of paper and then you can tell it to do stuff so normally the way you program this is with uh, a language and you stream it over bluetooth but the whole problem with this robot is it was missing these eyes so what these eyes are, and you see them on a lot of like hobby robots, is they're actually ultrasonic sensors, and what they or they're also called ping sensors. So what they do is they send out. They work pretty cool. They send out. Um, one of them sends out an ultrasonic pulse, so you can't hear it, but it sends out this wave, and um, it'll bounce off an object, and then the other one will receive it. So there's that's why there's two wires for it. A trigger to send out the signal and then an echo to receive it and what you can do is you can just do this real simple calculation using the speed of sound to figure out how long it took and then you just kind of divide by this number and you find out like the distance like how many centimeters is it so it's pretty easy and then you have this thing just giving you back like okay you're 50 centimeters away you're 10 centimeters away whatever um, so, but the problem was to add this, I had to add another little computer to it. So I'm not using the computer inside the robot, I'm bypassing that. And now I'm using this little microcontroller. These are called Arduinos, they're about 10 bucks, but they're like really awesome for like hobby stuff. And um, it already has built in, well, it plugs into the robot, so it gets its power from this USB cable from the robot, which is really nice. And then it has its own five volt, built in five volt there, that's that red wire. The black's the ground, and then one of the yellow or green is the trigger and the echo for the ping sensor. So a lot of robots you'll see, like hobby robots, they'll have these eyes, but it's really this ping ultrasonic sensor for giving you distance. And then why do you want distance? It's so you can like avoid stuff. So um, then what I do is I write code on this on a laptop, upload it to this board through over USB. And then like I write code so it can have a little driving algorithm. So my algorithm is just basically you're looking ahead. If something's less than like 40 centimeters away, drive forward. If it's less than 40 centimeters, then back up and turn because in other words, there's an obstacle. So anyway, let's try it out and test it outside. Okay, so you saw from the video, I felt like it was navigating pretty well. And, um, you know, the ping sensor was working and it was detecting obstacles and stuff. Um, so that took me probably out of the box, maybe like four days. There was a couple nights I was messing around with the JavaScript, which um, 
unlike Misty 2, it doesn't get stored on the computer itself. Um, it streams from Bluetooth. So you have your code on the phone or a laptop, and then you actually send the code over. You turn the robot on, and then you stream the code over, and then it, it does stuff. And I guess there's some neat features of that is that, like, there's a function to make it for speech, and you'll hear the speech on your phone or on the laptop. So that's kind of nice. And um, so it's not bad. I think it's pretty good learning platform. Like I said, I kind of messed around with the JavaScript for a couple days. And then then I got kind of bored because there was, there was no um, ultrasonic sensor. So I didn't feel like I could really do like collision detection. And then um, so I went and then I moved to the Arduino, which, which means you're coding at that point in the Arduino um, IDE using um, their like C, C++ um, kind of language and um, so that I'm pretty comfortable with um, but even so you know with robotics you can write code that logically should behave a certain way but some of it comes down to like the timing and the motors and inserting pauses um, uh, so you know even the, that final driving thing it took me a while to kind of get the right thing even like turning right um, the right motor speed and the right timing and all that but, you know, once I got it, I was pretty happy with it. So um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do next with it. I might go back to the JavaScript and play with the color sensor. Um, like I said, it was it was a pretty good diversion. Um, I like the fact that it can kind of go outdoors a little bit. So with this, um, as far as a rover goes, I'll probably use this one maybe to do something in my backyard. But in terms of, like, actual software development, um, I think Misty 2's like kind of a deeper platform and actually what I've learned on Misty 2 kind of helped me uh, make progress pretty quickly with with the RVR so anyway I'd give the RVR a thumbs up I think it's it's a pretty good starting place um, either for kids or adults and um, that's about it if I do anything else with it if I add more sensors then I'll make another video